Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about the remaining phyla of the clad amoeboid protozoa. I'll be talking about the phylum foraminifera, phylum radiolaria, and the phylum secozoa. It should be noted that these three phyla belong to the super phylum Rizeria. Let's talk about the phylum foraminifera. Foraminifera are amoeba like microscopic single cell protists. They have been termed the amode amoeba because they secrete tiny shell called test. Some are free living, while others can be in association with algae, a symbiotic association. It is estimated that there are around 4,000 species of foraminifera, and their name is derived from the foramen, as you can see from the diagram, which is an opening or tube that interconnects all the chambers. They are mostly marine animals. And as you can see from the diagram, they can possess some species, can actually possess one chamber called unocula, while others can possess numerous chambers called multinocula. Let's talk about their general characteristics. As you are aware, they possess the foramen, which is an opening that interconnects all the chambers. Foramen species are microscopic, single cell organisms found in marine environment and they possess this shell. Some are actually planktonic in which they actually float with water current. Planktonic means that they cannot swim actively against the water current but they flow along with the water current. While some are benthic living in the bottom of the ocean or the sea floor. Examples of planktonic foraminiferas include the heterohelix globulosa. Why example of the Benthic foraminifera include Drizalina alata and others. Some forum cells possess single nucleus and are uninucleated, while others possess numerous nucleus and are regarded as multinucleated. They also possess pseudopodia. The kind of pseudopodia the foraminifera possess are actually thinner and numerous and are regarded as reticulopodia. This actually helps them to trap and capture their prey. Let's talk about the morphology or the structure of the foraminifera. As you can see from the diagram, you can see the foramen, which gives the name foraminifera to the organism. The foramen is an opening or tube that interconnects all the chamber of the shell or test. From the diagram, you can see the chambers. Some foraminifera actually possesses one chamber and they are regarded as unilocular, while others possesses many chambers or numerous chambers, they are regarded as multilocular. The aperture of the foraminifera, as you can see from the diagram, is the main opening of the chamber cavity into the external environment. Some species possesses one aperture, while others may possess two or more apertures. It should also be noted that the first chamber is regarded as the proloculus, second chamber, the teroculus, and so on. The last structure in the diagram is the scepter. It should be noted that the scepter is different from the foramen. The scepter is the wall, while the foramen is the hole passing through this wall. As you can see from the diagram, the foraminifera also possesses pseudopodia. The needle-like projection that you can see from the image is a kind of pseudopodia regarded as recticulopodia. This they actually use to what, capture their food. Take note that the foraminifera as a single cell also possesses nucleus and various organelles. These essential organelles are actually present inside the shell, while the cytoplasmic overflow or the protoplasm covers the shell. And this shell that is internal is actually termed or called test. Food captured by the reticulopodia are actually dragged into the shell or test, where digestion takes place inside the Test. The process of reproduction and even the type of test in foraminifera will be discussed in a separate video. Let's take a look at the phylum Radiolaria. Radiolaria are among the most beautiful of the group protozoa. They are actually amoeboid protists, hence they belong to the clad amoeboid protozoa. They are majorly marine and planktonic. They are actually zooplankton. Radiolaria diameter ranges from 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter. 
and they produce skeleton which can take various form or kind ranging from ferrical to rod like and they exhibit biradia or radial symmetry as you can see from the diagram the central capsule divides the cytoplasm into endoplasm and ectoplasm and they possess a specialized type of pseudopodia called axopoda which is the most complex type of pseudopodia the radiolaria exhibit various kind of feeding behavior and actually occupy several or various ecological niche some colonial radiolaria actually live in symbiotic association with algae in reproduction they actually carry out cell division in asexual mode of reproduction where the cells simply divide and each daughter cell grew into an independent organism some actually carry out sexual form of reproduction let's talk about the last file on the secozoa the secozoa are diverse single cell eukaryotes they actually include the amoeboid and the flagellate form that means they actually have the amoeboid form and they have the flagellate form they possess pseudopodia which is of the phyllose type they inhabit various environments including the soil the marine environment as well as the freshwater ecosystem take a look at the diagram of the secozoa being displayed and highlight some of the unique features of this organism this is the end of this lecture in the part five of the protozoa which is the last we'll be taking a look at the clad excavator thanks for watching please subscribe to support this channel thank you